Hi, I'm Stephanie Ikonomu. I'm a film and television composer, and this is BMI's Know Them Now video series. So my creative process definitely varies depending on the project that I'm on. Sometimes I'll start by writing a theme suite where I'm kind of exploring different melodies and ideas. I'm finding sound palettes or sound worlds that I, I want to expand upon. Sometimes I start by calling up a performer friend of mine. For example, I work very often with a singer named Ari Mason, who also plays viola da gamba. So sometimes I'll call her up and say, listen, I have this project, I have this idea, what do you think? And I'll sometimes send her a sketch that is, is very bare and minimal, and I'll apologize profusely and say, this will be music at some point, but what do you think? And being able to reach out to somebody else and kind of get out of that isolated bubble that is your own mind and creativity is really crucial in just kind of breaking open the process. Getting someone else to just kind of breathe life into your music, for me, that's really critical. It's really essential. You know, it doesn't always start out that way. Sometimes I have a lot of really fleshed out ideas and then I record an ensemble or some soloists at the end of the process. It really does depend on what my general conceptual approach is when I start. But ultimately working with specific soloists throughout my life that I have continued to gravitate towards, that's always really, really important to me. So I was about seven years old when I really wanted to play piano. So my parents got me this tiny kind of one and a half octave keyboard. Um, and I sat a pretty garbage on it. So they decided to get me some piano lessons so I would sound a little bit better. They weren't forced to listen to me struggle. Um, and shortly after that, I saw my sister play in orchestras on viola. And I started getting really interested in, ooh, what's that string instrument? So she taught me how to hold the bow and taught me kind of fundamental rudimentary techniques on the viola. And just a year, year and a half later, I picked up the violin. And I think playing in orchestras really fostered my love for music. Playing wonderful symphonic repertoire certainly did. But aside from the classical world, I really think that I fell in love with music, listening to old classic rock with my parents. Um, loved listening to Fleetwood Mac and CCR and Crosby, Stills and Nash, and just lots of wonderful classic bands. And I think there was just something about that music that even when I listen to it today, that's kind of the thing that really still dominates my playlist to this day. It just um, brings so much love for, for what I have for this industry and reminds me of why I wanted to pursue it as a career. When I think about what album or piece of music influenced me in a big way, I definitely can't help but think of Animals by Pink Floyd. That album was really special to me when I heard it for the first time as a teenager, and it still continues to be really special to me. It evokes certain emotions that I just can't quite put words to. It's unique and really just kind of gets into, <laughs> into your psyche, and it's, it's a special piece of instrumental history, which I will always go back and listen to and just get excited by. I would have to say the work that I'm most proud of is my score for Jupiter's Legacy. The show is so vast in scope and scale that I felt like I got to explore a lot of different things stylistically. I got to write a lot of big symphonic hybrid orchestral music. I got to write experimental vocal music and choral music. I got to write industrial rock music. There was just something really unique about that show and that narrative that allowed me to kind of stretch and flex some compositional muscles that I don't always get to do. So I'm really thrilled and excited that I was able to do a soundtrack release for that, and I am certainly proud of the music that is on that album. How do I avoid writer's block? Um, yeah, it's a bit of a mystery. I would say, don't beat yourself up, you know? Allow yourself time to fail. And when there isn't time to fail, just hope that it's gonna come together. And I think when you're under those, you know, immense time crunches that some of these schedules with TV especially have, there's an adrenaline about it. You know, you always worry like, am I going to do the best job that I possibly can? Am I gonna be able to pull off this concept, this idea that's in my head? Am I gonna be able to execute it? Um, and then, you know, struggling to really get that idea that you know is going to sell that is, it's, it's challenging and it's daunting. But I think when you're in the throes of it, you sort of just lean on your instincts. You're able to fall back on those tools that you develop as an artist over many, many years. And that's the kind of only way that I really know to, to break through that block and a little bit of this. 
lot of it of this. Something I definitely want to be able to achieve in my career is having the opportunity to work with diverse creators. I want to work with people who have unique voices, who are bringing a different perspective to filmmaking. I want to be able to be challenged by these people. I want to be able to explore techniques and, and different creative styles that are out of my comfort zone so that I'm able to grow. That's the idea, really. I just hope that I have a career that is versatile and different and a career that makes me struggle and think that I can't quite do it, like I can't quite accomplish it. But at the end of it, I realize I come out with something I've never done before. I never want to feel like I'm writing the same cue over and over again. I never want to feel like I'm ever releasing music that feels like it could have been made five years ago from me. I always want to be challenged to do something different. And I think in film and TV music, there is that collaborative element where someone can come into your life and they can really push and break open what you think is possible artistically. So I really hope that my career has these collaborators, these new people coming in, especially diverse voices that I have the pleasure of working with and I, I look forward to kind of being challenged by that. The first piece of advice I would give someone starting out in the music industry would be j just be genuine to yourself. Be genuine to the music that you love. Be genuine in the music that you create. We live in a society now where there is so much content being made all of the time. There's so much content that feels quite similar or it feels contrived or it just feels like it's not made from a place of genuine artistry. So I think no matter what kind of music you love making, just do it. Make it, don't try to be like somebody else. Don't try to follow in the footsteps of your favorite artist. Do what feels real to you because ultimately that unique artistic voice I think eludes all of us at the end. I think that we're all just an amalgamation of our influences and experiences, and that's what's unique about what we do. That's how we create unique storytelling as musicians. So when you sit down to make music with yourself or with others, I would say just do what feels right and special and important to you.